Hello and welcome to another tutorial for Access users. In this one we're going to begin to create the tables for our database. So in the previous video you saw how we went through the planning process, how you divide your set of data up into appropriate tables and then work out the fields that you want in each table. Now if I just refer back to my little planning notepad document you'll see the table, the first table I'm going to create is this uh, movie table and you'll see the field names down the left there and I've actually added a field on it's called rating so I can list the, uh, the the ratings for each of the movies and I've also expanded the studio and genre fields to include the items that I would like in the lookup part of that field which will make more sense when I actually create the lookup in a moment so I'm just going to move that to one side and I'll refer to that as a builder table so the first thing I do then is click on new obviously make sure tables is highlighted in this object column here then click new and it'll say new table in the dialog I'm going to choose design view and click OK now there are a number of ways of getting to this screen here but um, that's the way I normally go so here we have the design grid for your table and I will enter my first field name which will be the movie ID tab across and the data type for this one very simply will be auto number now if you have a look down the screen you will see the field property section I'm not going to make any changes to this for the auto number because access is going to put a value in automatically it's not a human entered value um, so I don't need to worry about the field properties in this case I'll explain a bit more about these as I work through the table so we'll just simply move down to field number two which is going to be the movie title so I'll just put title in there tab across and this will be a piece of text and it defaults to the text data type so I don't need to change that and if we come down to the field properties here there's a few things I need to think about first of all the field size well I'm going to leave it as 50 um, I suppose most movies would be less than 50 characters and maybe one or two titles go beyond that but I'm not going to worry about those so uh, I will leave that at 50 all the other elements here format input mask caption I will leave those for now the default value won't be entered uh, there'll be no validation rule and there'll be no validation text because those two go together a validation rule is simply a way of forcing someone to enter a a particular value or a value within a given range if you like so maybe between two dates or between two numbers now as you look at these uh, field properties if you want to know more about them you can simply click in the row for the field properties and access gives you a little help on the right to tell you what each of those field property elements means okay there's a couple here that I will change this one that says required I'm going to set that value as yes so I can click on the drop down and choose yes and where it says allow zero length I'm going to set that to no let's press N on the keyboard when it's high it'll change it to no and press the enter key now the reason for that is a zero length means if I allow that somebody could actually type a double quotation mark and the cell to my eyes would look blank but access would see that as a value a zero length string I don't want that to happen I want to see some kind of information in that cell ideally a movie title so I'm going to say that I will not allow zero length strings um, the indexing I'm not going to worry about the indexing you can set that to yes okay well then <laughs> I'll allow duplicates as well just in case there are two films of the same title you never know maybe a remake um, the reason for indexing on older computers it made a bigger difference it would speed up searches on more modern computers it's very unlikely you're going to visibly notice a difference in searching unless you have a very large database and if you do have a database with thousands of records then I would certainly recommend indexing your records if you have just a few hundred records then it's less of a problem and you could either index or not it won't make much difference that's just my opinion other people might argue with me um, the other elements here Unicode compression the IME mode IME sentence mode and the smart tags I'm going to completely skip those for now and I might cover those in a future tutorial but they're not going to be relevant to anything I'm doing here 
Now then, if we move back up, you'll see I'm not writing anything at all in this description column. Um, the reason for that is, I think, first of all, hopefully my field names will make it obvious what this table is about. Um, however, if you feel that you want to extend the table details and add a description, then feel free to do that. There's an option there if you need it. Okay, so moving down to field number three. Now this is going to be the studio field and the significance of this one, if I can type it correctly, is that it will be my first lookup field. So at the moment it's text, I'm going to click on the drop down and choose lookup wizard. Uh, again, there are people who will say that you shouldn't really do this within a table, but I'm showing you how to do it if you want to. My personal view is providing that all of your database is only going to be used in access, then frankly it's not a problem. Uh, so here what I do is, in this look at wizard dialog, I simply click on I will type in the values that I want, click on next. It's going to be a one column lookup and it's simply going to have a list of studio names. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do here is actually copy them from my notepad document and just paste them across one by one. Use a keyboard shortcut, control V. So all I'm doing is simply entering a list of studio names, fairly obviously. Okay, I'll just do one more. And then I will just cut to the end. I'll add a few more in, but I'll cut to the end so you don't have to watch me entering every single one. Okay, so there's my completed list and all I need to do now is click on next. And it, it puts in a default uh, name for my lookup column, just a studio, which to be honest, I'm okay with that. So I will just click on finish and it's done. Now at the moment, it still shows data type as text, which you might think is a bit odd, but if we come down to the field properties, again, in this section, the only thing I'm going to change here is say it's required. And I'm also going to say again, zero length. And on the lookup tab of my field properties, this is where the bit that's relevant to my lookup list is, because you can see here, it says display control is a combo box, and then it says row source value list, and underneath that row source, it says, or it shows me the list of items that I've just put in. So if I just click into that and just scroll across, you will see all my studios. Now I can add to this list by simply editing in this row. So I can add uh, by typing a semicolon and then between quotation marks the name of the studio that I want to add on. So equally I can delete items just obviously by using the back delete or the forward delete buttons as required. Now there's nothing I really want to change here except for one thing. This very bottom thing here says limit to list. At the moment it says no. I'm going to say yes. What that means is that no one can choose something that isn't or enter something that isn't on the list. It must be an item in the list. And it's fairly easy if it needs to be done to add one in. So that's that one done. We're going to go to the another lookup now. And this one's going to be genre. So type in the field name. Type it correctly. And again, drop down, lookup wizard. I will type in the values. Click on next. And again here, I'm going to type in a list of the genres. So I'll type the first one, action. Let's come down to the next. I'm just using the down arrow, by the way, to move down to the next uh, cell. And again, I'll just type a few in, and then I'll just cut to the end of this. Okay, so there's my last item in the list. Now, if I press the Enter key once I've typed the last one, by the way, if you press Enter at any point as you type your list, it'll automatically jump to the next section of the wizard. So if I press Enter now because I've finished, then it'll go to the next stage of the wizard. If I've done that by mistake, I can simply click on the back button there and go through and edit or add to that list. Okay, so just in case you uh, do move along by accident, you can go back. So I'm happy with that. I will click on next. I'll leave that as genre, the label for my lookup column and click on finish. And again, if we look down here in the lookup tab, I'm going to change the limit to list to yes. 
So somebody must enter something on the list. I'm also going to change the general items so it's required. Again, make that yes. And zero length, no. Okay, and those are the only things I'll change there. Okay, the next two fields are fairly straightforward. It's going to be director, which will be text. Just tab through, and the movie star. Again, just tab through that one. I won't make any changes. Um, I haven't made those requirements, by the way, just in case somebody doesn't know and needs to go and look that one up. So, so far, the only three requirements, the title, the studio, and the genre. Um, after star, I have got the rating. Again, this is another lookup. So you should be familiar with this by now. So drop down, look at wizard. Again, I'm going to type in the values here. Click on next, and I'm going to type in the movie ratings, which are the UK ratings, in case you wondered. So if you're typing this up in another country, you're welcome to use your local rating system. I think these are ours anyway. So UPG 12, 15, and 18. I think there's a PG 13. Or is it oh, 12A? Sorry, there's a 12A. That's right. I think that one is actually 12A. Yeah, just in case anybody mentions it. Right. Uh, happy with that. So click on next. And again, leave that as rating for the name of the lookup column. Click on finish. And there we are. So it's starting to come together. Next thing we have is the year of. Oh, I'll tell you what. I'm going to go back to rating. And I'm going to make that required, I think. So set that to yes. And again, say no for zero length. And that's all I'll change on that one. So, okay, we're ready for the next one, which is going to be the year of production. I'll just call that year. And this will be a piece of text. Obviously, the year is a number, but I'm not going to do any calculations with it. However, what I will do is I'll change the field size down to four, because a year would never be longer than four digits, uh, unless it's a long time in the future. You don't think access will be around by then. Um, and I'll make it a requirement so somebody has to type in a year of production. And again, I'll set it no for zero length. And I'll leave those other elements as they are. So back to my field names then. And we have running time next. And this will be slightly different or different data type. I'm going to choose number for this one because I might want to do some calculation with that. And if I come down to the field properties, I'm going to leave all these items pretty much as they are, with the exception of the default value, which is not going to be zero. I'm simply going to leave it blank. So I'm going to delete that. Um, I won't have a validation rule or validation text. Now, I could set that to prevent somebody entering something like a thousand minutes or something. Um, however, I will just leave that as it is for now. Um, I won't set it as a required field either for the reason that somebody might not be aware of what the running time is and so they can come back after doing a bit of research and type it in later on. It's not a critical part of my table. So that really is everything that I need for the table, for the movie table anyway. So those are all my fields. There's one more thing I will do before saving and that is to click in the movie ID field and click on this button here, the primary key button. Now what that does, it tells Access that this is the field that uniquely identifies the record. Um, it's just good practice to have a field that is uniquely identifying a record and set a primary key. It's a good habit to get into anyway. And it doesn't take much time. So there we go. So I've set my primary key and I can click on the Save button now. And I'm going to call my table something imaginative like Movies and click OK. And I don't need to populate my table with records yet, but I'm going to type one in just so you can see it working. And click on the, the view button there, which will switch it to the data entry view. So I shall put in a familiar title, Star Wars. I'm doing this one because I know it. <laughs> right, studio, I can use the drop down here, choose 20th Century Fox. Genre, whoops. See, look, it says, but I, I, I was trying to go away from the genre field there, and it's popped up this warning message saying the field movie movies.genre cannot contain a null value. The required property for the field set to true enter a value. It's a bit long winded. What it means is I must enter something in there. I did know that anyway, but thanks for the warning. So, science fiction director, Mr. Lucas, I think. 
I remember rightly, Star. I'm going to put in there Harrison Ford because he's one of the most famous people that was in it. Uh, the rating for Star Wars was U. This is the original Star Wars, obviously, I'm talking about. The year was 1977, I believe. It was released in the US anyway. And the running time is about 120 minutes. Now, at the moment, you can see on the left-hand side, I've got this little pencil marker, which indicates I haven't entered the record yet. So all I need to do is press the Enter key on my last field. Access jumps down, ready to enter another record. Now, the other thing I need to show you here is that you don't need to click the Save button. Once you've typed your record, press the Enter key to enter the record on the table, Access automatically saves it for you. So I can now close this table. Remember, I haven't pressed the Save button. OK. Reopen that Movies table, and there is my record. So it's worth bearing in mind that you don't have to keep clicking the Save button. Access, once you've created the database file, as you enter and complete your records, Access automatically stores them as they're created. Um, if you're updating a record, obviously you do need to save the record, not save the record, but remember to update it. And all I mean by that is if, for example, I make a change here, as soon as I start to type in something else, if I type in 1978, you'll see a little pencil mark has appeared here. Now, until I actually update that by moving away, it won't be saved. So I need to click away from that. It's now saved and I can carry on then, so I'll change that back. Another way you can save, by the way, I'll type the year in, is simply press the F9 key on your keyboard, so press F9, and that automatically updates the record as well. So we'll close that one down then, and that's our first table, and that will conclude this tutorial. In the next one, we'll continue with our table creation, we'll create the customer table, and we'll also create the table that links the movies and the customer table together, and that will be the transaction table, which is in some ways the most important one. So thank you for watching this tutorial. Hopefully it wasn't too long and hopefully found something useful there. And I'll see you next time.